Hey everyone, have you noticed lately that things just kind of suck? As I famously said in one of my previous videos, I am a millennial. And like many other millennials and Zoomers, I now have to add, have no real concept of the future. None of us really expect to retire. None of us really expect to have an upward trajectory in our lives. We're just kind of expected to live and maybe hope that we die before we have to stab somebody for fresh water. It seems that in small ways every single day, things are just getting a little bit And have you ever wondered why? Today we're gonna to talk about why. The why is neoliberalism, a term you've probably heard before, but might not know what it means. But it is a theory of economics which more or less permeates every aspect of our economic reality right now. And if we can understand the ideas of neoliberalism, and understand the crisis that's going through right now, maybe it can be defeated. Maybe, just maybe, myself and fellow millennials might have a way to look into the future and be optimistic. So let's learn what it is together, how to beat it together, and I don't know, maybe save the world. So neoliberalism starts with the prefix neo, which means that it's a resurrected old idea. So the ideas of neoliberalism are actually pretty old. It's a theory brought back from the dead like some sort of horrible economic zombie. So another term for neoliberal could be neoclassical liberal. So it's a modern resurgence of classical liberalism, Sargon alert, and has a few major tenets about what it is to run an economy, like deregulation, Shortly before one o'clock on Wednesday morning, an inferno broke out in a tower block in West London. Privatization. Just this week, we saw the price of a life-saving pill jump from less than $8 a pill to hundreds of dollars. Free trade. They already started different policies uh, that uh, want to restore neoliberalism uh, in, in Bolivia. And austerity. Fifth largest economy one of the leading financial capitals in the world, contrasted with the fact that a fifth of the population, 14 million people, are living in poverty. You might have heard the term neoconservative, which is not neoliberal, but uh, there definitely is a lot of overlap. Neoconservative is a specific United States foreign policy position, one that was held by people like Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, all of them neoliberals themselves, but, not necessarily as part of their neoconservative outlook. It's its own thing that's also bad, and I made a video about it. So if we need to understand neoliberalism and bringing back the classical liberal idea of economics, we're gonna have to go back to when classical economics reigned supreme in the 19th and early 20th centuries. I'm sure you've heard about it before, 14 hour days, six day work weeks, children working in factories, extremely unsafe work conditions. You know, a completely deregulated economy where you had a very small amount of people controlling a vast amount of the world's resources. So this completely unregulated, classically liberal economy led to huge inequality, like literally the Great Gatsby. And the ones that did not prosper in this economic model was, well, everybody else. The working class, those who were actually working for all of the money that those people were siphoning up like giant vampires were, they were living pretty terrible lives, even compared to, you know, pre-industrial societies. And those liberal revolutions at the end of the 18th century just put those people who were basically ruling over them in power. So more and more workers started to become socialists, which was a movement to ground the progress of humanity and social stuff in edible, tangible, real benefits, you know? These workers joined unions, and those unions agitated for better working conditions. You've probably heard about all this stuff before. It's basically all of labor history. And bit by bit, in battle after bloody battle, people literally died for these. People got some concessions and working lives got better. So you can thank unions and labor activists for tearing down the classical liberal world and at the same time for Saturdays and holidays and eight hour work days and children not working anymore. Things were still pretty rough though, and then in 1929, the classical liberal world completely upturned with a huge stock market crash that no amount of cutting budgets and firing employees could fix. The world went through a massive economic depression and didn't really come back until, well, uh, the Second World War. Yay! How did it come back? What is it about the Second World War that made the economy come back on its feet? Well, it was economic planning and 
Keynesian economics, the idea of investing in things to increase consumption, to increase wages, and to make the economy overall jumpstart with help from the government. They basically took some of the economic controls that countries like the Soviet Union were doing, which did not suffer the depression by the way, and brought them and merged them with capitalist forces and claimed it was a new form of economics. And from 1939 to 1945, it was used to jumpstart all of the economies so that they could do World War II. Yay! This horrible government meddling in the economy led to one of the most prosperous times in world history. In the 1950s in the United States, income inequality was at its absolute lowest. Union membership was up and everybody's lives were generally improving. You know, if you were white. They only really let white people participate in all of the benefits of this economy, which, uh, yeah. But not everyone was happy with this time just because all of the evidence was showing that it was working. Hardcore, laissez-faire, classical liberal economists started to get together and try to find ways to undermine this system. They wanted to assert that the laissez-faire economics that caused the depression, and then when they doubled down on it made things even worse, was good actually. These types of economists were the seeds of the neoliberal movement, and no amount of evidence to the contrary was gonna convince them of their pure, ideology. That being said, their ideas were pretty marginal. In 1947, a group of economists like Frederick Hayek, Milton Friedman, George Stigler, and Ludwig von Mises started something called the Mont Pelerin Society. And just for the record, we're all just total monsters. The Mont Pelerin Society was designed to fight the growth of central planning and Keynesian economics, which seemed to be working just fine and was really popular and had bipartisan support, even the Republicans were Keynesians at this point. And because their economic ideology did not jive with reality or how economics actually works, they were marginalized until the 1970s where a long project of trying to worm their way into the intellectual mainstream started to become successful. And they somehow managed to convince people that cutting social services in bad economic times and austerity somehow was going to make things better, somehow. The description is that if you cut taxes and give millionaires and billionaires more money that they'll somehow use it to invest in the economy more, which uh, in bad economic times, doesn't ever actually happen because all the times when they get those tax cuts, they just sit on their extra money like, you know, a dragon. I have a feeling I made this joke before. This is different from our current model of neoliberal economics, which believes in cutting taxes for the rich in hopes that they'll pretty please do something with it and not just sit on it like they're some sort of dragon. In the 1970s, the neoliberal economists started to get taken more seriously and their main demands were for more market liberalization, which meant more free trade, less taxes, more money for rich people, that kind of thing. Now, neoliberalism was so natural and so successful and so supported by everyone that in order to implement it in a country for the first time, they needed to more or less force a fascist military dictatorship in a country. On that note, uh, let's talk a little bit about Chile. Yes, in the 1970s, Chile had a fascist dictator and under this dictator, by the name of Augusto Pinochet, Chile put in a ton of neoliberal economic reforms. They imported a bunch of Chilean economists who came straight from the same schools in Austria and Chicago that these same economists who started neoliberalism all hailed from. And they implemented a bunch of neoliberal reforms in Chile. It was easy, it was easy to do. And it was really popular if you just ignore the fact that they had to kill 30,000 people in order to do it. And of course, it worked beautifully. Chile right now is a very stable and prosperous. The unrest was sparked by a metro hike, which has now been suspended, but the protests have grown, with anger over living costs and inequality simmering amongst demonstrators. Oh, this idea caught wind in the United States and the United Kingdom with the elections of Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. An emphasis on catastrophic health insurance, so that if a family is threatened with being wiped out economically because of, very, of a very high uh, medical bill, then the insurance would help pay for it. These are the kind of elements of a national health insurance important to the American people. Governor Reagan, again, typically is against such a proposal. Governor, <laughs> there you go again. It led to an explosion of deregulation and dominated politics from then until, well, uh, we're kind of still now. And let's not lie, if you look at GDP and stock markets, it led to huge economic growth. Of course, all of that growth only really went to the bank accounts of the 1%. Everyone else had their wages basically stagnate, which if you account for inflation, 
meant that they effectively went down. And of course, deregulation and financialization worked great for the economy. Oh, except for this one time. It was a manic Monday in the financial markets. The Dow tumbled more than 500 points after two pillars of the street tumbled over the weekend. I know, I know, I was shocked too. How could a economic ideology that is in no way based on evidence cause any problems in the global economy? It blows my mind, really. And to make things even better, all the problems caused by neoliberalism were solved by neoliberals, which meant that right now we are uh, more or less in the exact same position we were right before the collapse in 2008, which means that uh, it's all gonna happen again soon. Lovely. And neoliberalism has made our economy so much different than it was when it first started. Like, for example, now wealth inequality is the worst that it's ever been in human history. All of those social programs that were started in the Keynesian period to try and address social structures of inequality were slashed. So social progress is on the backslide and things like racial disparity and gender disparity in income is getting worse and not better. The attack on and destruction of unions and lower union membership has led to a huge loss in class consciousness. And now the global economy is extremely unstable and everybody who's designing the economy are not the ones who suffer when there's a major downturn. It's led to a situation now where millennials are objectively worse off than their parents and it's taken large segments of the world economy and close them off under these dictatorial regimes called corporations, which now basically rule the world, which basically has led to a de-democratization of the economy. We've used economic liberalization and the opening of free trade, sometimes forcing developing countries to do it through debt in order to take all of their resources and take all of that money and put it in a big bank account for a rich person who then will not spend it. Efforts to privatize healthcare have made it less effective and more expensive. And because of massive tax cuts for rich people and corporations, the governments don't have the resources to fix basic infrastructure. And at the same time, what little services they are providing are anemic at best. And in order to fund all of those tax cuts for corporations and rich people, they then have to cut back on social services for the most vulnerable in our economy. You know, to balance the budget. I keep feeling like I'm forgetting an aspect of this, an important one. Oh yeah, climate change. These mega corporations and their drive for ever more economic growth has led to a position where our earth can literally not handle it anymore. And we are unable to transition to a form of energy that would not kill us because we can't find a way to make it more profitable than just digging oil out of the ground. We're literally going to have on the tombstone of the human species that we died because we couldn't find a way to profit off of not killing ourselves. So yeah, humanity seems like it's really at a turning point right now. And it could be easy to give up, drink booze, wait out the apocalypse. Now, while that might be fun, I do think that there actually is hope. After the 2008 recession, people are starting to get wise to neoliberalism. And even though it's still a very dominant ideology in our politics and our economics, there are movements all around the world that are springing up to combat it. The young people are starting to understand your betrayal. If we are prepared to stand together, and with existential threats like climate change and with millennials really not having anything in the future to bank upon, this is for all the marbles. This is really the only thing that we can do to stop neoliberal capitalism from cannibalizing all of us. So instead of talking about a history of an idea that came onto the stage, consumed, and destroyed the world, now it's time for us to make history. I don't know, maybe millennials can actually succeed. And maybe we can have, you know, optimism for the future. Wouldn't that be a thing? I mean, let's be fair, the memes would suffer, but we wouldn't. Just had a thought, what if it's not just neoliberalism, but capitalism itself that's causing all these problems? Oh no! Thank you everybody for watching. If you wanna know a little bit more of the history of this period when the neoliberal turn was happening, I recommend you watch my video on millennials and why millennials aren't doing as well as their parents. If you like this video and you wanna to try to give hope to some other people to push for these movements forward, 
I do recommend that you share this to your friends, your groups, subreddits, whatnot. Lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons. They are wonderful and amazing and very attractive. And if you want to see future videos early and help me literally pay my rent and feed my cats, then you can go to patreon.com slash stepbackhistory and give as little as a dollar a month. It all really, really helps. Thank you everybody and tune in next time for more Step Back.